Where's the old stars? I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it hasn't changed it. Still the same, you know where? How are you? Well, we don't know who's coming in there. People coming in, we don't know who they are. You guys been? I am. We're Raph, Weaver, Colin Weaver. Oh, yeah, sorry, I don't know. Alright. Sorry. Good luck. 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 Well, you know where to go. You know where to go, do you? Well, you know, because I never play with you. Pensford. Upstairs to the right hand side. Well, we got an office. Yeah, there's a sign on it. Ah. Nice, Ross. Come on, mate. Have you got boots? Of course I have. Good lad. Good lad. Who is it? Is she? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good to see you play. Yeah. Oh, you're going upstairs, when I'll see you in a bit. How are we doing? Hello. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm good. 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 I'm Got your out. Yeah, something like that. Well, you know where to go, don't you? I should hope so. I should hope so. I think I'm in the other dressing room now. I just told All right, yeah. Is it left or right? So I'll hold it. Who's in here? Who's in here? Well, it's quite a few of the old houses, yeah. 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 Good shot. Come on, you'll know. Uh, no one or two. No one or two. Yeah, yeah. How old are they? Oh, no, I said that. Well, hey, I think you said you're a big fighter. Glad to know that uh, two members of the 1968 FA Cup winning squad have just made it to the bar. They are the captain, Graham Williams, and Dick Clark as well. Mickey Fudge is here, the gold machine. And also great to see my friend Kate Lovett here as well, of course. Uh... There's fans in here? Yeah. Okay, we won't talk about yesterday's game. Any more... <laughs> Eighty-nine point six, ladies and gentlemen, doing a fantastic job. And uh, how long to kick off? Let's have a look at the old clock. Twenty minutes to kick off. Brian Horton is here. Brian, what's it like coming back here? Oh, I had fantastic memories. I've just been to to see Hardy Green, where my mum and dad lived. I just come past the keys where where we played. Obviously, there's the houses on it now, but great memories of Ventsford. I bet they've got you down. The neighbours has been a bit of a posh bloke now, haven't they? No, never, never. Um, from a mining community, my dad was a, uh, a miner, and that, that will never change. What about today? What about the reason? What about the memories of Ralph and his lovely young family here? Yeah, great memories, a great lad, and uh, when I got the phone call, I come down. Uh, it was certainly a yes, and lots of my friends are here from school, you know, so I'm seeing all, all kinds of people like that, so yeah, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Share with us a little bit of uh, non-league nostalgia because we all love non-league, whichever uh, team we're involved with. I mean, and this is very much part of your football makeup, isn't it? Yeah, um, I got a free transfer from Warsaw when I was 17, and obviously, you know, a local team, and, and they were good side. So uh, Dick Neil signed me here as a 17-year-old boy, and then got in the first team straight away. We had a good side, and uh, then Granville Palin took over him. My last game was playing Kid in Missouri as we played them in a two-legged final for the Staff Senior Cup. So my last game we won the Staff Senior Cup, which was brilliant. And then went, went to Port Vale. Port Vale came back down and played a game as part of my transfer fee. So um, just great days and the people that you meet, you know, Billy Millard, people like that, they were, they were such good players, you know. I mean, some of those are playing the league easy today. What was the difference in standard and in fitness and in people giving you more of a smack or did you get more of a smack when you played in a non-league or was it harder when you went up to a stage? That, that's why it was good really because I was 17 and I was probably about 
five foot three, went on the building and they really enjoyed working on the building the four years that, that I, was, I was at Hensford and it did me good because Over, you wish you could do it again and be a little bit more calm. Um, it, I thought it was a huge responsibility because everyone expected and wanted Jeff to score, uh, and he kept us waiting till the 92nd minute. And then, of course, once the ball hit the back of the net, uh, I just wanted the whistle to blow, and that was it. And then I wanted to go home. <laughs> And of course, he played that fantastic uh, one-two with uh, Graham Lovett's backside. I mean, we'll never forget that. Graham Williams, what a day for you to lift the trophy. Yeah, it's, it's always a good day. We'd been to Wembley the year before. If you Those people that can remember, we got beaten by QPR, um, which is not a good uh, memory. But then the following week, we went to Everton. And Everton had beaten us twice in that season. And I can remember the boys talking and say, there is no way that any club in England could beat West Bromwich Albion twice in a season. So, and this is how we went out with the attitude that they will not pass. And, uh, and, and Jeff came up with one of the best goals of the season. I think it won goal of the year, did it? 
Um, I'm not sure, but he won the goal of the year and uh, all the glories every other year we were at Wembley. So that was the 68 side at that time. Most of you won't remember because you, you weren't even thought of then. <laughs> But the thing was, apart from the FA Cup in 68, you were a prolific cup side, weren't you? I mean, you went back to Wembley, well, you Wembley before, and then later. When we're called out on these occasions, I normally expect a bit of silver, but we got nothing. <laughs> because we were at Wembley, we were Wem at Wembley three, three years out of the six years. So we weren't, we weren't a bad side, although we don't get the credit that um, I think we deserve because we have we had some great players there as well and great guys and that was part of the history of West Bromwich Albion. We we could beat anybody on our pitch, give them a goal start, two goal start. We would come up with, by winning four three or five three. We could do that quite easily. And those of you that didn't see Graham play. Don't be fooled by the, uh, the, the dapper appearance of this stately gentleman. He was a hard bugger. He really was. Very hard indeed, but always fair. Dennis, can I just bring you in, please, thank you, because you made FA Cup history that day. Tell us, more, tell us about the story. Well, actually, uh, what I remember about it, that uh, John Kay came off and there's now another 30 minutes to play. Uh, I managed to go on and, uh, as you know, we won 1-0. And years later, somebody said, you made history. And I ain't got a clue what they were talking about. And they said, you were the first substitute after you come on and play in the FA Cup final. This is Guinness Book of Records. Guinness Book of First. Which is great. And did they spell it with an E? Yeah. So, uh, the headlines the next week. Uh, it's uh, been a great, 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 